so friends in our mu class 4 there are many questions asked on the topic called welding so i have covered some questions in this video so the questions are as follows why welding cast iron is difficult how can we weld cast iron how to weld 810 and 16 mm plates nomenclature of welding electrode welding parameters before welding selection how to order welding electrode oxyacetylene safety and rule difference between gas cutting and welding torch so friends this video was going long that's why i will cover defects and non destructive test in my next video so this video will be helpful please watch till the end so now moving towards our first question why welding cast iron is difficult so welding cast iron is difficult because it has a high carbon content and it has high carbon content that's why it is brittle in nature and it is brittle that's why it is prone to cracking means it easily cracks thermal stresses are challenging to remove from the heat affected zone cracks will likely provocate over time poor thermal conductivity and may lead to distortion so basically this cast iron is brittle in nature that's why it is prone to cracking and it easily cracks because of whenever we do welding because of heat it cracks and second main thing is because of its poor thermal conductivity it may lead to distortion so as you can see in the image that these are the types of distortion and you can imagine because of this cast iron welding it leads to this defect so as you can see angular buckling longitudinal rotational these are the types of distortion so these were the properties of cast iron because of which it is difficult to weld cast iron but you can weld it so the question arises how can we weld cast iron so for welding cast iron we don't use general purpose electrode because it may lead to crack so we use nickel ferrite electrode preheat the joint with gas torch but not red hot we will preheat it but we will not reach its temperature to red hot then with the nickel ferrite electrode we will weld the cast iron using high current so here in welding we will use high current to weld the cast iron so this is how we will weld the cast iron so now moving towards our next question how to weld 8 mm and 16 mm plates so when we are having two dissimilar size thickness plate so we have to weld that so for welding that we are having two formulas the one is for electrode diameter and second is for the current we need to weld the plates so first we will take out the electrode diameter for that the formula is t upon 2 plus 1 where t is the thickness of the plate and for current we will take the same diameter which we have taken out from the first formula and we will put it in the second formula so here current will come so now we will move towards the welding part so for welding first we have to select the electrode size as per the thick plate second we will heat thick metal edge using gas torch so here we will heat the metal edge of the thick plate with a gas torch then third is the we will put emr at the taper part of thick metal so first we have to select the electrode size second we have to heat the thick metal edge and third is we will aim the arc on the taper part of the thick metal so this formula i have taken from the welding manual so this has been accepted by many of the surveyors so whenever they ask about welding of 8 mm and 16 mm thickness plate or whenever they ask about two different thickness size plates so you have to tell this answer now moving towards our fourth question nomenclature of welding electrode so nomenclature is the most important part we should know what this e6013 mean so sometimes surveyor ask about this question that uh, how will you know which electrode you are using so how will you get the idea about to which material the electrode is made up of or he will directly ask the nomenclature of the welding electrode how will you explain so for explaining that you have to take an example so better a good idea is that take an example e6013 and explain about that so this same question was asked to my friend that tell me the nomenclature of a welding electrode which you were using on the ship so he gave an example 
E6013. For E, he told electrode, 60 is for the tensile strength, 1 is the position and 3 is the flux, type of cleansing material used for the welding electrode. So the surveyor accepted this answer. So now we are having our electrode and we know about our electrode. So there are some welding parameters we should keep in mind before welding. So these are the welding parameters which we should know before the selection of the welding. So I have explained you this in my previous slide. So I will move towards my next question. How to order welding electrode? So this is the question which is mostly asked on the topic called welding. So I will tell you the accepted answer for this question. So this is the ordering list which I have taken from the IMPA logbook. So we should know the electrode diameter, composition of the metals to be connected, type of joint to be welded like butt joint, T joint and all, position of welding like 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, AC or DC power, type and size of electrode, manufacturer name and product type and required quantity in kg. So these are all the parameters which should be known for the ordering of the welding electrode. So this is what you have to tell whenever you are asked about how to order welding electrode. So this is the list which I have taken out from the IMPA logbook which is kept on the ship for ordering the equipment of the ships. So not making my video long, I will move towards my next question. Oxyacetylene safety is and the rule. So this question is mostly asked and it is an important topic of the welding. So this question is asked like tell about the gas welding safeties of oxygen and acetylene. So these are the safeties of oxygen and acetylene welding. So now moving towards our answer. Always secure the acetylene cylinder in upright position. Never use acetylene about 15 psi or lower than that because it may lead to chemical reaction and that's why all acetylene cylinders regulators are having red mark on 15 psi. Never transfer acetylene to any other cylinder or storage container. Whenever carry bottles, put caps on them. If accidentally head hits somewhere, it will hurt someone with its rocket behavior because of internal pressure. So this is the most important thing. Whenever you are carrying or transferring the cylinder from one place to another, so you should put the caps on the bottle. Now moving towards our safety part. So we have pressure reducing wall, non-written well, flame arrester, visible plugs on cylinder, kept outside the machinery room. So the color code is black for oxygen and maroon for acetylene and left-handed threads for acetylene so that we can easily know which cylinder is for acetylene. So these are some safeties. So sometimes surveyor asks you to explain about these safeties that how these work and what are the function of these safeties. So for that I have provided you notes on my telegram channel. Just search the username at the rate mmdmu class 4 and you will get the channel and in search type the topic guess welding or you can type the safety's name directly you will get the detail and i have added many questions and answer on that telegram channel and it is best for your mu class 4 preparation so better join the channel and go through the channel so that you can get each and every answer almost 90 percent syllabus i have covered there on that channel so please join the channel so now moving towards our next question difference between gas cutting and welding torch so this is also asked in our mu class 4 orals so this may also ask like difference between oxyacetylene welding and cutting torch so a welding torch has a tip with one hole there are two valves controlling the amount of oxygen and acetylene going to it whereas cutting torch has a series of small holes around a large hole so in between there is a large hole and around that there are small holes the small holes receive a mixture of oxygen and acetylene to heat the metal being cut. The mixture is controlled by two valves. The center large hole receives only oxygen through a separate passage with a thumb control on off valve. When the metal reaches molten temperature, you press the valve with your thumb. This allows the oxygen to exit the center hole and blow away the molten metal. So this is the basic difference that welding torch has one hole 
but in cutting toss we are having a large hole in middle and around it we are having a series of small holes so this is one of the difference so second difference is that uh, welding torch is only having two valves whereas cutting torch has two valves and one more to cut off valve it is known as also cut off valve which is pressed at a time of cutting so i will show you one figure in which you will get a basic idea about the difference of the welding and the cutting torch so friend there are two torch like up one is for cutting and down one is for welding so as you can see that uh, cutting torch is having one big orifice a large hole in middle and surrounded by small holes around it as you can see then in this welding torch you are seeing only one hole a large hole so the oxygen and acetylene first mixes by these two valves these are the control valves so there are two control valves we are adjusting as per the requirement and here we are having two control valves and one cutting lever which is used for the cutting whenever we require oxygen we use this cutting lever so first the oxygen and acetylene heats up the metal then after heating up we are cutting the metal by using this cutting lever now i will show you one more line diagram you will get clear idea about these torches so as in welding you can see only one flame is coming and it is controlled by two valves so this is mixing chamber in which oxygen mixes and comes out but in cutting torch you can see we are having flames at side and in middle there is one more flame that is for oxygen at the time of cutting with the help of this lever we are using the oxygen so these are the basic difference between the these two torches the holes and the lever so friends this video is going long that's why i will cover defects and non destructive tests in my next video if this video was helpful please like and share the video and subscribe the channel marine helpport